Hi guys, as part of today's lecture, we will look at the embed analog input interface that is converting an analog input into a digital output and interfacing this with the LCD which you have done in the previous lab. So the main focus of today's lecture will be the ADC interface or the analog input. So as part of today's lecture we will understand the embed analog APIs which is application programming interface. So as a part of this API what are the functions we need to look at and then we will look at a program example. So before we move on to understanding the embed fundamentals of analog let's understand some ADC fundamentals. So the first term we need to know is resolution. If I have an analog signal that varies between 0 to 3.3 .3 volts and I say that the resolution of my ADC is 8 bits then my ADC can recognize two raised to eight distinct levels between 0 and 3.3 .3 volts. If it is two bits for example then it will be 2 raised to 2 which is 4 distinct levels 1, 2, 3 and 4 and it is always a power of 8 and the range what the ADC recognizes please understand the range that the ADC recognizes is called the input range the input range is independent please understand it is independent of the input signal let's understand this with an example so let's say that the input range of my ADC is between 0 to 3 volts so this is my input range and my input signal goes from 0 to 5 volts now as you see that 3 volts is somewhere here zeros here so anything above 3 volts and between 5 volts anything here will be seen it will be seen by my ADC as 3 volts because since the input range is from 0 to 3 volts anything above 3 volts will be recognized as full value or the maximum represented value okay so the input range must be decided you must decide input range based on the input signal. So we can set the input range using something called as a reference voltage. Now for your embed board the reference voltage is equal to 3.3 .3 volts hence my input range is from 0 to 3.3 .3 volts. Now this is fixed for the embed board but some embed boards give you an ability to specify the reference voltage. So in some embed boards you can specify the reference voltage and hence you can set the input range. Okay. So that said, let us see the analog interface on the freedom board. So now that you're familiar with the freedom board, 
these pins here on the right hand side of your embed board so basically you have an ADC with a 5 is to 1 multiplexer with 5 inputs and 1 output please mind you that this is an analog multiplexer and not the digital multiplexer which you have studied in your class so we can use any of these five channels as an input for the analog signal so at any of these you can give the analog signal and that said you can use multiple channels and in the program you need to assign each pin that is any of these pins to a variable which we will see in as part of the code so that said let's look at the functions as part of the API first and foremost is the analog in in the digital labs we used digital in similarly here we'll use analog in you need to specify a variable and then you need to specify a pin name so this is an example you use analog in then this is your variable you can specify this name and then this is the pin so for example on this board if we were using PTB 0 then here you would write instead of P22 you would write PTB 0 alright so that said this is the declaration function this is to declare now these functions are to use most frequently you will be using most frequently you will be using the float read function because you typically read analog values as floating point numbers so you can use this as a in that is your variable name dot read so this gives you a floating point number in the range of 0 to 1 so how does this work suppose your reference voltage is 3.3 so your input range is equal to 3.3 so 0 will mean 0 volts and 1 will mean 3.3 volts from that perspective 0 0.5 0 0.5 will equal to what any guesses 3.3 .3 divided by 2 which is equal to 1.65 volts alright I hope this is clear so this function float read or since just read a in dot read will give you a range please remember it will always give you a range 0 to 1 and you have to multiply this by your V reference to get the actual voltage okay we will see this in the program the second function that you need to use is the unsigned short read underscore u16 so basically what it does is if you don't want to read in the floating point format but you need in the unsigned short format then you will use this function so it will be a in dot read underscore u16 so this will give you a range of 0 to hex to 0 f f f f okay but most commonly you will be using 
this function because you want analog values as floating point numbers. So let's quickly look at the example. If I have my variable A input at pin number P20, again this pin number will change. And suppose if I make three variables or called as sample 1, sample 2 and sample 3, again mind you that sample 1 is of the type float, sample 2 is of the type unsigned short and sample 3 is of the type float again. One important point I wanted to show is that sample 1 if you would like to get the value you will use it like this so a input that is this variable dot read so now the floating point value is into sample 1 the unsigned short if I use read underscore u16 is in sample 2 if you just use like this for example sample 3 is a input if you just use it without any functions no functions this is the same as this they are both the same you can choose not to use this function but if you directly say sample 3 is equal to a input it takes the floating point number and directly puts it in sample 3 most frequently you will be using this although in the previous slide I said that you will be using this one since this is equal to this this is a smaller statement and hence easier to write okay they are both the same so this is a smaller statement so we'll be using this all right so let's quickly look at the connections now if you remember we used these pins for the LCD in the previous lab we will be using this analog input PTC2 for the potentiometer so I have a potentiometer with three terminals one is the source and ground so let's say I take my source and I connect it to P3V3 that is this one which is 3.3 volts and I take the other terminal and I connect it to the ground here as we used in the LCD lab so it's all the same ground so we are again just being convenient about it it's it saves pins on the board we save ground pins here and I take the variable pin which is the center one this is the variable and I give it to my PTC2 which is this one here and now as I change my potentiometer I hope to see the value on the LCD so this is our lab I hope that was clear we are using the same connections as our previous lab so no change is there so let's quickly revise the LCD pins pin number one which is ground we connect to ground pin number two remember was VDD we connected to P5 underscore USB which is this terminal do you remember why because your LCD is 5 volts it needs a 5 volt input so we'll connect it to P5 volts underscore USB then contrast goes to ground after that your PTC 9 is your register select your read write again we connect to ground because we always write into the LCD we rarely read and then PTC 8 goes to enable and these are the same connections which is right here okay 
So let's look at the program. We hash include embed.h, text lcd.h, this is for the LCD, stdio.h, this is for since we are using printf and scanf commands, so we'll use the printf, uh, stdio. First, we use the analog in, we call the variable a in, and I give it to ptc2 as I said. Your text LCD remains the same from the previous lab. If you remember in the LCD lecture, I had mentioned that if we would like to write a floating point value on the LCD, we use something called as typecasting. We need to change the float value and write it into a character so that then we can display it on the LCD. So I declare this character buffer which is 16 characters then I declare a variable float analog underscore value then I start my main function can you guess what this line does? If you remember, A in will give me a range from 0 to 1. So if I need my actual voltage, I need to multiply by 3.3 to get my actual analog value then I clear the LCD this is just for displaying then is my infinite loop I multiply the value again since I have to do it again and again I set the location of the LCD now comes the important line where I will write this analog value which is float into the character which is buff percentage 2f means up to two decimal places if this is percentage 3f it will be three decimal places and then I use the LCD dot print f command to write this value that is the analog value onto the LCD okay I hope this is clear so let's quickly go over this program again first I declare my buffer which is of type character since I have to write the analog value here then the float analog value which will take the value from a in then I will multiply this I clear the LCD I print just the name you can write anything here you want you could write your own name also then I have my while one where I multiply the value I set the location of the cursor I write s print f which is typecasting so I'm writing the value here and the number of decimal points I can set here and then I have lcd.printf which is actually writing to the LCD. So I hope this lecture on the analog interface was clear. We will now try and see to implement this code in the lab. So I shall see you in the lab session. Thank you.